you know what? Okay, I've changed my mind. I haven't spent enough time talking about giant monster movies and things like this. You know what really, I think, conveyed um, good movement and giant monsters was Kong Skull Island. I had no problems with that. I didn't really like the characters, the story, stuff like that, but that's okay. Um, it's still a giant monster movie, and I go, yeah, I love giant monster movies. Um, I think it really... You look at King Kong, and you go, that could be... Like, that's a giant monkey. You know, like, that is a big ape. Without a shadow of a doubt, that creature is ginormous. Um, and I think it didn't have to be loud. It just had to have really good motion and really good weight distribution in the 3D model. Um, and you hear me a lot in these streams talk about, um, like, the, the Shinra building, right? The Shinra building in the Final Fantasy VII Remake you go, wow, that is friggin' ginormous. And you look at it, and it's it's huge. And then you go inside of it, and you go, wow, that is ginormous. Like it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a 3D model. It feels like, holy crap, that's a building. Um, and when I watched Kong Skull Island, I went, holy crap, that's a giant monster. Same thing kind of actually when I watched the Peter Jackson King Kong. I went, wow, that's a pretty big, convincing monster. Um, but watching Godzilla, there's nothing that says, holy crap, that's a big monster. There's, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of, maybe it's because of the way that they present all the monsters. You never really get a feeling for it. Like, Rodan is presented through clouds, Mothra is presented through all these very flowy things. That could be it. Maybe the presentation of the monsters is just not on point like it needs to be to say wow that's that's a big monster maybe that's where they're falling short because i don't really get hype for uh for these new for the new godzilla films unfortunately i wish i could yeah i just i don't know something just in my bones goes yeah you know what it's gonna it's definitely going to be Godzilla, but I don't know if it's going to be a convincing whip. But yeah, it's like, I don't, I don't think it's ever going to be where it, where it needs to be to like put me in a theater and then just get me to sit and watch. And I feel like that's, that's a bummer. Because I didn't even, I didn't even sit in the theater for this new one. I got hyped for it, and I said, "Wow, that could be really good." And then I saw some of the trailers, and I was like, "Okay, I don't, I don't think it's gonna be as slick." And then I watched it, and I said, "Yeah." It was to me, it was just like a loud fest, where it was just so much noise. Even when I was at home. So. Yeah, good shot, Chief. There you go, right back at you. So, because it just kind of feels like, um, this big noise fest, you can't really get into it. There's, and I feel like now in this day and age, you can't really skimp out on, um, on your audio in a film. Because when I go to a theater, I don't want to be blasted by decibels, um... I didn't pay like 20 bucks to have my ears blown out. What I did pay for was a slick experience in a movie theater and to get the full feature of it. But there's always, there's this thing where, um, oh, you know what, I go back and up. It feels like recently there's this thing where because something's big or because it's an action scene, it has to be louder than everything else. So what they've done is they've lowered the audio volume and they've exploded the action volume right and yeah while that while that tells you um it's kind of like i mean the best comparison i can think of right now that's an easy kind of understandable thing is like a jump scare in a horror film like you go yeah the, the jump scare is about to come out because all the sound left my theater oh god oh boy And then, because all the sound left my theater, there's about to be a big explosive noise. 
But in these new action films, it goes, oh god, the sound just left my theater. I'm about to be assaulted by decibels. Is what it feels like. Let's head out. So... Yeah, there's just... I think there's too much of a discrepancy of how to entertain an audience and how to deliver a good experience. So... I don't know, maybe it's because I'm becoming an old man. I'm just like, I don't want to, I want to save my hearing so I can hear my grandkids. But, I don't know. We'll have to see, because for a while it was, um, movie theaters were very bassy, right? Like, when Jurassic Park came out, Jurassic Park was super bassy. And it, like, when, I'm talking when the, when they're looking at the glass of water, and then all of a sudden you're sitting in the theater, and the T-Rex stomps and you can feel it in your lungs. You're like, wow, this is this is some pretty big bass that's happening. And it wasn't nearly as bad as it is today currently, where it's like, well, you got your bass, now here's your volume. So like I I don't want to feel both of them. Uh I think what was it? I think if you watch Aquaman, that's probably the best example of this volume to action kind of feeling is like you're watching a movie and you're like yeah yeah and then you see it you see a set piece coming up like he discovers that to see it you have to look through the uh, the face of that of that statue so he looks at the face of the statue and then you're like there's gonna be an action scene I'm about to lose my eardrums there's about to be something that's just gonna that's just gonna hurt me <laughs> right that's the best way I can describe it is here's something that I'm about to feel and I'm not gonna enjoy um, and then all of a sudden, Black Manta shows up, explodes the statue, and here comes the explosion of sound along with the statue. So, I wish stuff like that would would just kind of get out of films, or at least get out of movie theaters for a while. So, you know, I wish it would just turn into good quality feelings we're like yeah this is gonna be bad without like aquaman's about to feel it without me feeling it for the next two days in my ears so if movies could go that way long story circling back around it would help convey action scale weight and a bunch of movement to a lot of cg things or action-packed things in your movies when it's dealing with like sound design. So that's my whole scatter shot of ideas for like movies, scale, CGI, sound things. If if you watch the last business, you'll know you'll know you know what I'm talking about. You'll get it. If you watch the last video, you'll be like, Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but if you haven't, you're gonna have to go back and kind of catch my ramblings on some of those ideas. You know, I just... I like movies too much. There's too many thoughts where I go, Man, how often do I gotta balance out my TV to watch this film? And I do watch a lot of films at home, but it's because movie theaters have kind of... For me, they've kind of gone the way of the dinosaur, where... I don't want to spend $20 to maybe have a good experience. I can be at home and rent your movie on Amazon Prime, or you know what, your movie might even release on Amazon Prime for free with my Amazon subscription, and then I didn't have to go anywhere to, uh, to watch it. And maybe have a good time, or maybe have a really bad theater experience. We've all, we've all been there where you're like, oh god, this is the worst theater I've ever been in. <laughs> we've you know what I'm talking about. And you're just like, man, I, I would have rather just stayed home. All right, where to next? Baby? It's that, it's that feeling. So, I just choose to avoid it and watch it from home if I can. I'll wait for it to come out on, on the digital downloads on Amazon Prime or Hulu. Gun down. I mean, you know, purged or whatever. Yeah, sensitive spot grease. But even 
and I think it's because a lot of these things are still balanced for theaters. When they release um, on Prime and stuff, they're not their audio is not corrected. And that's what I always talk about in video games, why their audio sounds so nice, is because it feels tailored to it. To, like, the the viewer. Right? It, it, it's tailored to the person who's playing the game. Um, and it lets you adjust so many things. But when you're watching a movie, and this is what I'm always talking about when I think as gamers we're getting kind of spoiled, with just all the good stuff we're experiencing lately, and of course over the years we've been playing on PC, um, is that when you watch a film, I always find I'm turning it up and down, just consistently, in a lot of different parts of the movie. So, that's that's been a film over like the last five years, it feels like. Lots of audio has been ignored. Um, On the ship, indoors, I got walls. And it's just too, it's just a bummer. Yeah. But, Cap, you know. Do you have a moment? I do have a moment. You've Stop my ramblings. Thank you. The path is far from over. I want you to know the difficult challenges ahead. Uh, you're gonna reveal yourself I as a night witch. You can do. I'm not denying that. Good, because I'm the best. Be done. I've done it before. Cal, even the strongest of Jedi. I'm not Trilla. I'll be fine. I know you're not. I didn't say that. I'm not asking you to say anything. It's okay, Seer. Really. Just be safe, Cal. That's all. I mean, Cal, you can at least listen to what the lady has to say. Come on, she might be a night witch and all that, but you gotta at least be like, Hey, I'm gonna take your advice, okay, lady? And I'm gonna check all my audio levels in my recordings, and before I put them on movies and charge money, I will make sure they sound good. I think every sound engineer in movies should have to should have to take an oath. Like, here it is. You're probably, you're probably like, but bro, your sound is just okay, and I will tell you something. You're very right. However, I do have a lot of fans and lots of things going in my PlayStation 4 is uh, an explosive beast of sound via its fans that we all know this. Therefore, I have to use some noise suppression technology during recordings. However, if I didn't have to, boy, oh boy, these bad boys, are, they sound delectable to the ears. Let me tell you something. Ooh, just you wait when I take apart my PlayStation 4 and totally don't void my warranty and clean out my heat sinks and upload my thermal paste, uh, update my thermal paste and all that jazz. It's gonna sound nice. Uh, but we gotta get to that point first. You know what I'm saying? To, to the fact where I can go, you know what? Maybe I can risk avoiding the warranty on my PS4 and not fear the fact that my I, get through. I, I won't be able to stream. <laughs> I think that will be where we'll have to start. Until then, we'll just have to play with some of the frequencies to drown out the PS4 fan. Because, boy, that guy... That guy is loud. But, you know what I find is that in the more artsy films, the sound is really good. And I think maybe because there's... Like, the, the person producing them knows they're smaller films. You know? You have that... You have that quiet, and you have that really build up to, like, a nice, a nice sound. You don't have quiet to explosion. You have this really good effect. I think, and you're going to be like, guy, you watch terrible films. There's this one movie, and and don't think these are the films I watch. I just watched them because it looks cool and sounded nice, and then I, I was committed to it, and I had to finish it. Called uh, Evolution. It's, it's not the one with David Duchovny. Although, great movie when I was a child, um, Evolution, uh, I'd probably watch it again. It's a great ad for Head and Shoulders. Um, but the one I'm talking about is a French movie called Evolution, and that one's really interesting. And it's got really good ambient sound design, and you know what? I don't really have any complaints about the sound design. I do have complaints about the movie and the fact that I had to struggle to watch it. I'd say if you really if you really like art house films, go ahead and watch uh, Evolution, the French one. If you don't, s stay away. That's that's totally cool too. But you know, it is an artsy film. I don't want to talk about it like story wise because it would spoil it. However, half of it, if you if you do watch it and you go, wait a second, what's going on here? 
half of it I found it is a nature documentary so they fooled me into watching a nature documentary how dare they but needless to say I did watch the full thing but it also <laughs> may not have been the most entertaining thing uh, because half of it's a nature documentary and the whole movie is only an hour and a half so I watched 45 minutes of nature documentary in my supposed body horror film Good job. so you know that was my feeling about it excuse me I'm trying to get the secrets I mean I was also trying to avoid a body horror film because those things just freak me out but uh yeah I can't I can't do it well you know what I've been getting better at it I've been watching horrific, grotesque, uh, monster movies to, to, you know, try to mentally prepare me for stuff like that. But, I don't know, I, I want to be a person who can look at that and be like, yeah, I can, I can sit there and watch that, but, let's be honest, if I'm not one of those people, that's fine. I try my best. Anyway, what we we've, we've totally lost the plot here. We're we're back to normal to normal story stuff in this game. We're we're back on to main stuff, which I'm glad that I ran around, found all those health stems, and found all that good stuff because boy, is it going to be helpful? I can tell. Although I am glad that uh, we were able to upgrade our lightsaber damage. That's really helpful. Someone was here, an outsider, not from this planet. Ah, yes, rings a bell. Someone like me. Maybe, oh, you know what's a good one? Not a, uh, I don't think it's a great movie. But, um, Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets? Let that one's see. got some really nice movement, too. It's got some good effects. It's got yeah. some good shots. It's got see. some good sound stuff. I personally just don't like the film. But it's because I don't like, uh, I wasn't a fan of the main actors. So that's, that's totally a me thing. I can't remember the guy's name. He was in um, the new Spider-Man. Not Andrew Garfield. He has kind of a distinct name. It's too bad I can't remember it. He played the uh, he played Harry Oswald. Oh, uh, sorry. How's Harry Osborn. Wow. Sorry, it's late. Um, but, uh, yeah, he was the... Uh, he was the Green Goblin in the new Amazing Spider-Man 2. So that if you didn't data Han didn't I don't know I want to like that actor but I haven't watched things where I go yeah I like him as an actor I wish I could there's something bad where I go man I want to like your movies and then every time I watch Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets I go no nah, I don't buy it I don't buy it they made him a tough guy and I went I don't know if I buy this Unfortunately. Or they made him like an expert in everything, too. I can do a... I can usually... I can usually suspend my disbelief. My suspension of disbelief for a lot of things in films. Because I watch a lot of stupid movies. Like the Ginger Dead Man. But when you make someone an expert in everything... It kind of just makes my brain go, yeah, I'm good. I kind of mentally check out. I just find those characters not super exciting. Like, if you're capable of everything, good on you. But when I'm watching a film, I go, you know, there's there's no person that's just running around doing this constantly. Like, even... Like, when you watch a James Bond movie... Of course you get the power fantasy of, oh my god, James Bond is kicking all these people's trash. But then there's a point where you're like, James Bond does get beat up. You're like the Daniel Craig James Bond. As much as people have their own opinions and like, you know what? I don't think he's right for the role. I think those James Bond films, those 007 movies, are pretty solid in regard... Sorry, scratching the face. In regard to um, James Bond getting kicked. Let's like, go, getting kicked in the face. Getting beat up. You know, he doesn't... 
he doesn't survive and just live throughout the whole movie. He gets captured, he gets beat up in ways that like Pierce Brosnan didn't get beat up, which makes me go, yeah, okay. What's that? I like this rendition of it. I don't know if I would appreciate like I didn't. Which one was it? It wasn't Casino Royale. I think it was. Skyfall? I don't know. One of them I wasn't the, the biggest fan of, but was, the, was that the one where M retires or something like that? I do not shake in fear. Leave me alone. You ain't bad. You dead. I'm trying to tell the people about my movie preferences and things in movies. And believability of a super spy who doesn't know how to super spy everything. But... Yeah, I think it's important to make your character not only believable, but, like, they should be injured as a main character. And that's what kind of took away from Valerian of a Thousand Cities. Oh, sorry, City of a Thousand Planets is... Um, he just wasn't super believable as a man who can do every single thing perfectly. Probably my least favorite character archetypes. However, the movie does have very pretty shots and some pretty impressive CG stuff. I think it's the guy who made The Fifth Element is who made that film. Um, so of course it has some good solid effects behind it and some good good quality shots, which is nice. Yeah, don't block me. Don't do it. Nope. That's your, no. Oh, he dodges my force. I'm not weak. I'm strong, just watch. But the fifth element, man, that's a... Rudy Rod, Chris Tucker, man, that is a... I feel like that is a great character for him. And I know he kind of made a... I don't know if he made a killing with it, but... Man, that was just... You can't... You can't do... You, you can't do that movie without Chris Tucker as Rudy Rod. It just... Hold on. There's a giant door I didn't open. It just doesn't carry the same weight. I couldn't imagine anyone else... Like, he does it so well. And not just, like, so well, but so confidently. You know, it's like they put him in this crazy leopard skin-tight suit. That's a one-piece also, and they're like, Alright, Chris Tucker, this is all you, dog." And then he goes, You're right. This is all me. And then just kills it. Like, that man deserves an Oscar. On. An Emmy? I don't know. You know what? I don't watch award shows. I don't believe in them. I think they're trash half the time. Brothers, an intruder. But yeah, it's like... Oh, you got murdered! You... Oh, Jesus. That's aggressive, Cal. You gotta... You gotta dial that back a little bit, Chief. Yeah, there's definitely something to be said about that director. And he really pulls it through every time, so... I got no complaints. I think he'd make some solid films. Visually... Yeah, that, that's about my opinion on that bad boy. Rudy Rod, definitely great. If you have a chance to look up some of the hilarious Halloween costumes, I say do it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a fair warning. Everyone does not kill it, but I'm glad everyone tries to kill it. I can appreciate that. Do I die here? I do die here. Okay. Like there's some costumes and you go, man. I don't know. Much better. I don't know if you should have pulled that off, but yeah. Chris Tucker, Rudy Rod, Bruce Willis. As army man, I can get behind it, because he's only army man for about a small portion of the film. And he only does army man things, which is totally fine with me. They make his backstory, hey, you're army man, but also he does get beat up throughout the whole film. What up, chief? How do you know so much about the Night Sister? Observation. I've seen many things since coming here. What is that? Well, I bet you have. Must it mean something? Nope, peace out. Many great minds have gone astray in pursuit of order. Tired of your cryptic battling, chief. Yeah, I need a second away from your craziness. I know you're the guy who sent me on this journey. I'm going. 
end game. Here we come. How can you do this? Uh, with sick jumps. You How can you not down. get off of me? Quit shooting bows at me. Oh, what? Oh, God. You're all agile and whatnot. There you go. Have that. Looks climbable, but not without equipment. Um, okay. Oh, God. I guess we'll find some equipment down here. Jump. Flip. Again. Can't believe we made it. You sure know how to have fun. And you know what? Talking about films and characters I'm not a fan of and just different shot compositions and things like that. Um, because I, I didn't really watch a lot of the Star Wars films before I started playing this. You know, it's, it's, it's a, I don't know if it's a sin, but um, watched them all. Uh, except for well, I watched a portion of The Last Jedi. It was the portion I saw was all right. But if you watch, um, just because this one comes to mind the, the quickest, is if you watch, because uh, it's the newest one that I've seen, is Rise of the Skywalker. They have a lot of good shots. And here's kind of the, the trick. And I've noticed this um, because of Disney things, right? Well, this is this is all I'm not going to say because of Disney things, but it kind of comes across as like a Marvel Disney kind of thing. If you look at Marvel stuff, their color grading isn't super hot. It's all kind of gray and well, it's never like uh, super saturated is kind of the best way to put it. So it all kind of looks kind of samey. Um, but same thing for like Rise of the Skywalker. Uh, yeah, girlfriend, don't tell me how to live my life. He was right about you. I'm the best. He was right. What? Jedi are thieves and selfish liars who bring nothing but death. Back off. Mm. If you attack me again, I'll strike you down. Oh, I won't do a thing. What, you got your, you got your spiders? Oh, gross. Gross. They will have their revenge. I didn't kill those people, but whatever. I guess I guess we'll kill these and then we'll then we'll come back to my rant. No, nope. get away from me, zombies. Yep. Okay. So you can watch uh, like Rise of the Skywalker, nice right? Um, and whatever you think about like the characters that they have, um, there's never really a lot of. What, what, am I, what am I trying to... How am I trying to put this? They have good use of color, right, in some of the scenes. But their shots visually... I don't know if there's a single shot where I could be like, Hey, this defines a great part of the movie because it's visually striking. And because of its color or because of its sound or anything like that, there is one single Please, scene that I can place. point out in that entire movie. Um... And it's when Rey and Kylo Ren are fighting each other through force whatever. Force tele telepathy? I don't... There's not a good way to say it because there's no really force power thing. They're connected so they can fight each other through the force across the galaxy and communicate and pass items through. But they're in an all-white room, so every color stands out. That's visually the best representation of color throughout that whole two two and a half feels like two and a half hours i don't i don't know exactly how long it is but boy it feels long um through that film so when you compare it to a lot of other things in the star wars universe like there's just not a lot of striking imagery in the new sequels and that kind of comes back to sorry i'm just kind of shotgunning it again character wise along with not only does like their color not stand out, it doesn't really stand out as a strong film like some other uh, some other ones I mentioned before, like The Fifth Element, because it has no real strong um, character moments. Oh, it's a bummer. I just wish 
a lot of time movies took time to compose their shots a little bit better and just make it visually more consistent. You know? I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm kind of kind of all over the place with this topic. There's a lot of there's a lot of things I like to hit in movies, and I'm also trying to focus on not getting murdered by this bug. But yeah, Rise of Skywalker. I did not think had very many standout moments. Had very many standout shots. Very many standout colors. Sister keep following us. Standout music. Like there was just nothing strong about it. That better stay on our toes. A like, lot of older movies, like, definitely contain, which is a shame. Any idea what that flying creature is? Like, I would Let's love don't find out. to love the new films, but it kind of falls into all the pitfalls I don't like. Like, Ray Skywalker, or Ray, just has, she's so good at everything that I go, okay, well, that's real exciting. Like, there's no. To me, it doesn't seem like there's a struggle. It doesn't seem like, especially for like the last movie in, in all of Night what Brother could Rose. be the last Star Wars films, to, a to have nothing that says, "Oh my God, there's danger and things happening," and what? Oh wow, this is this is going on. Like, she survives everything. She does everything. Her conflict, her inner conflict, is nothing. Like. Oh my god, I'm not good enough. Wait a second, I'm the bet. Like, hey, that's what it feels like. Here. I can't do it. Oh, wait. Yes, I can because I can. You know, it's very... Oh god! Spiders! It very much suffers from, like, main character syndrome throughout that whole movie. 